pag guys to the accounting channel so narito na tayo ulit ngayon para sa ating susunod na video which is the second part of the different kinds of obligations kung mapapansin nyo po ito po ay based on the civil code articles 1179 to 1198 compared sa mga nauna na po nating mga videos ito po ay medyo mahaba haba so hinahati po natin siya into three parts nauna na nga po yung part 1 which we introduce the different kinds of obligations under the civil code. Na itong part 2 naman tatalakayin po natin ang dalawang types or rather tatlong types. So first is yung uh, pure and conditional obligations and the second one will be the obligations with a period. Okay? So inaanyayahan ko po ang lahat na mag-subscribe po sa ating channel to alert you on the release of upcoming videos at para uh, maging updated sa ating uh, mga different series such as this series, the Law and Obligations and Contracts series. Also, huwag niyong kalimutang i-like itong video na ito kung ito po ay nakakatulong sa inyo dahil kung nilalike niyo ito, nakakatulong din sa amin. And also, Um, naglagay kami ng link sa description wherein kung gusto mong itest ang sarili mo or kung gusto mong um, uh, tawag dito, itest kung meron ka nga ba talagang natutunan uh, magsasagot ka lamang ng mga uh, siguro e me easy to the uh, challenging questions so medyo marami-rami siya okay so kailangan mo lang mag-register and it's free okay So, narito po tayo ngayon sa mga different kinds of obligations. So, meron tayo, tayong anim na subsections under the civil code. So, dito sa part 2, pag-aaralan po natin ang um, pure and conditional and obligation with a period. Okay? Itong mga to sa part 3 na po ng ating video. Okay? So, let's get on with the uh, lecture or discussion. So, nahin mo natin ang pure and conditional obligations. Okay? So, ang ating um, introductory article. Okay, article 1179. So, every obligation whose performance does not depend upon a future or uncertain event or upon a past event unknown to the parties is demandable at once. Every obligation which contains a resolutory condition shall also be demandable without prejudice to the effects of the happening of the event. So, ito po yung introductory article natin at kung uh, inintindi nyo po kung ano itong paragraph 1 natin, it's basically referring to pure obligations. And ito naman, syempre, ito ay isang conditional obligation na merong isang specific type of condition which is i-discuss natin maya-maya kung ano nga ba yung resolutory. Okay? Pero ang gusto nyo lang i-point out dito is lahat daw ng pure obligations ay demandable at once. At ganun din yung mga uh, conditional obligations with resolutory condition also they are demandable at once. Okay? So, ayan. So, pure obligations, obligations whose performance is not dependent upon a condition or a period. So, kung walang condition or walang period, ito po ay isang pure obligation which is demandable at once. Okay? So, ang conditional obligations naman, ito po ay nakadepend upon a, syempre, upon the condition. Okay? At yung conditions na yun, pwede natin siyang... Uh, makonsider na future or uncertain event or pwede rin siyang past event pero unknown to both parties uh, na ano connected dun sa obligations okay so dalawa uh, pwede siyang maging future pero uncertain event pwede rin siyang maging past event pero dapat okay dapat very important ito dapat unknown siya to both parties dahil kung known kahit sa isa, sa isa lang, syempre hindi na natin yung matatawag na condition. So itong dalawang to, considered condition. Whether it is a future or uncertain event or a pa, uh, past event which is unknown to both parties. Okay, so let's give an example. So Kirito promised Alice a brand new laptop. So anong klaseng 
obligation ito. Ito po ay isang pure obligation. Kung mapapansin niyo po, walang condition or period. So, this is demandable at once. Ibig sabihin, si Alice, pwede niyang i-demand ka agad kay Kirito yung ano, brand new laptop. So, ito yung ito yung obligation to deliver a brand new laptop. Next example. Okay. Kirito promise Alice a brand new laptop if, okay, nandiyan yung word na if, if Alice passes her exam tomorrow. Um, wag nyo pong iku-confuse ang condition from the obligation. Okay? So, pag in-analyze natin, ano ang obligation? Ang obligation, yun yung mga to give, to do, not to do. So, in this example, ano po ang obligation? An obligation po natin ay to give a brand new laptop. Okay? To give a brand new laptop. Pero, okay, itong obligation na to, merong condition. Okay? Mangyayari lang tong obligation na to, if, okay, if. So, may condition. If Alice passes her board or her exam tomorrow. Okay? So, medyo nagiging advanced tayo ha. Board exam. Okay? So, if Alice passes her exam tomorrow. So, ito yung condition. Passes her exam tomorrow. Ito naman yung obligation uh, to give a brand new laptop. So, this is a conditional obligation. Okay? Next. Okay. Next article. When the debtor binds himself, when his means permit him to do so, the obligation shall be deemed to be one with a period, subject to the provisions of Article 1197. So, ano itong Article 1180? Okay. Every time na meron tayong nababanggit na uh, tawag dito, uh, maya maya, magiging ano tayo dito ah, parang kung mag discuss natin to further pero um, at least medyo nakita natin kasi pinapakita natin yung article um, ang tawag dito in chronological order okay so se kanina 79 ngayon 1180 okay pero at least nabasa natin yung 1180 maya maya explain natin yan pagdating ng siguro bandang dulong part nitong conditional obligation or hindi na ako sure, siguro sa bandang obligation with the period. So, maya maya discuss natin yan. Okay, so back to conditional obligations. Okay, 1181. In conditional obligations, the acquisition of rights as well as the extinguishment or loss of those already acquired shall depend upon the happening of the event which constitute the condition. So, ano ang ibig sabihin ng Article 1181? Dito na natin may discuss ang uh, isa sa mga classification ng condition. So ang unang classification or parang kumbaga types ng condition ay Okay, so nag-ano siya sa Article 1182. So maya-maya, when the fulfillment of the condition depends upon the sole will of the debtor, the conditional obligation shall be void. If it depends upon the chance or upon the will of a third person, the obligation shall take effect in conformity with the provisions of this code. So again, both 81 and 82, itong dalawang to, um, dito natin makukuha yung different classifications of conditions which are very important. Okay, dahil uh, madalas ito yung mga lumalabas sa mga quizzes or exams or even the board exam. Um, madalas ito yon pagdating sa conditional obligation. Okay? So, ano nga ba itong mga to? Okay, ayan. Sinamarize natin into a table. Yung nasa first column natin, ito yung article 1181. Wherein the second column, yung according to whose will it depends, ito naman yung article 1182. Ito yung sinasabi. Okay, so under the first column, we have suspensive and resolutory. So maya maya explain natin yan. Under the second column, we have potestative, casual, and mixed. So maya maya explain din natin yan. Unahin muna natin yung first column. Okay, so ayan. Yung first column natin, ito yung classification ng conditions according to its effect on the obligation. Okay, ano nga ba ang nagiging effect ng condition 
doon sa obligation. Okay, unahin muna natin yung suspensive condition. So, yung pangalawa, resolutory. Um, unahin muna natin to. So, suspensive condition, these are the conditions that cause the birth of the obligation. So, malignaw po yung nabasa nyo. Itong mga conditions na to, it causes the birth of the obligation. Meaning, simple lang. Kapag yung condition na ito ay nangyari, okay, or nag-take effect, or whatsoever yung term na gagamitin natin, basta nangyari yung condition, it will cause the birth of the obligation. Ibig sabihin, magiging effective na yung condition from the moment na, okay, ano mangyayari? From the moment na, okay, yung condition ay namit or nag-take effect. Okay? Ibig sabihin, kung hindi nag-take effect yung condition, hindi magkakaroon ng obligation. Kasi walang birth ng obligation. Hindi, hindi maisisilang yung obligation. Di ba? Okay? So, malinaw po dyan. Next naman, resolutory condition. These are the conditions that cause okay, the extinguishment of the obligation. So, baliktad. Pag sa suspensive, birth. Okay? Pag sa resolutory, extinguishment. Okay. Meaning to say, okay, meaning to say, under resolutory, meron nang nag exist na obligation. Ibig sabihin, effective na siya initially. Okay. While in suspensive, wala pang nagtitake effect na obligation. Kasi isisilang pa lang eh. Di ba? Pagdating sa suspensive, isisilang pa lang. So, wala pang nagtitake effect na obligation. Where, wherein, sa resolutory condition, okay, or obligations with resolutory condition, meron ng obligation na nagtitake effect. Okay? Yung condition, yung resolutory condition, okay, the happening of this condition will cause the extinguishment of the obligation. So, meron ng nagtitake effect na obligation, pero kapag nangyari, kapag nangyari yung condition, may extinguish na yung obligation. Ibig sabihin, hindi na siya, hindi na siya, kung sino man ang obligadong gawin yung obligation na yun, hindi siya obligado kasi may extinguish na. Okay? So, mas maintindihan nyo to kapag merong example, syempre. Okay? So, ayan. Examples tayo. Anahin mo natin to. So, Taki promise Mitsuha a diamond ring if Mitsuha graduates valedictorian from her class. So, iyan let's natin ulit itong uh, situation na ito. Ano ang obligation? Ang obligation ay to give a diamond ring. Okay? Ano naman ang condition? Ang condition po ay if Mitsuha graduates valedictorian from her class. Okay? So, nakalagay dito, ito po ay isang suspensive. Okay? Or isang obligation with a suspensive condition. So, ang ibig sabihin nito, kapag binalikan natin yung uh, definition ng isang suspensive condition, suspensive conditions are conditions that causes the birth of an obligation. Okay. Kung i-analyze natin itong situation na to, initially, wala pang obligation. Tama? Hindi pa nagigive rise or hindi pa sinisilang yung obligation ni Taki na magbigay ng diamond ring. Bakit? Ano ang dahilan? The very simple reason is hindi pa naman namimit yung condition, okay? Kasi pag namit yung condition or namit yung suspensive condition or nangyari yung suspensive condition, doon na magte-take effect or doon na isisilang ang uh, obligation ni Taki. So in this case, kapag si Mitsuha ay gumraduate ng valedictorian, that is the only time na magkakaroon ng obligation si Taki, okay? So, ayan. Next example naman. Taki bound himself to shoulder Mitsuha's tuition fee until she graduates. Okay. Analyze natin. Gaya nung unang example. So, ano ang obligation? Ang obligation ay Taki bound himself to shoulder. Okay. Shoulder Mitsuha's tuition fee. Okay. Yan yung obligation. Okay. Ano naman ang condition? Ang condition ay until okay, she graduates. Okay. Okay. So paano nating nasabi na ito ay isang obligation with a resolutory condition? Simple lang. 
pag in mo yung situation, initially, effective na, okay, effective na agad ang tawag dito, obligation ni Taki kay Mitsuha, which is to shoulder her tuition fee. Okay? At yung obligation na yan, matitigil lang kapag nangyari, okay, yung resolutory condition. Ano ba ang resolutory condition? Yung until she graduates. So, kapag nakagraduate na si Mitsuha, that's the time na may extinguish ang obligation ni Taki, which is to shoulder Mitsuha's tuition fee. So, sana naging malinaw po yun. Okay? So, let's proceed to the next okay, topic. So, punta naman tayo sa types of conditions according to whose will it depends. So, yung kanina, meron tayong tatlo. Una is a potestative condition. Pag sinabi natin potestative condition, ito po ay nakadepende, okay, or yung fulfillment or the happening of the condition is fully dependent upon one of the parties. So, pag sinabi kong one of the parties, it may be either the um, obligee or obligor or ang ginamit po natin dito ay creditor or debtor. Okay? So, it depends upon only one of them. Okay? Hindi pwedeng both sila kasi ibang, ibang, iba, iba na yun. Okay? Mamaya, ayan na natin. Pag sinabi natin potestative, isa lang. Okay? Soul will. Okay? So, mamaya, magbigay tayo ng example para mas maintindihan nyo yan. Next naman. Okay? So, resolutory. Um, okay? So, mukhang na-typo po to. Na-typo tayo dito. So, this is ano ba to um casual this is casual casual dapat no casual okay so yun yun na lang casual condition okay so casual condition uh the fulfillment depends upon chance and or will of a third person okay so it depends upon the happening of uh, Uh, an event which is diba, um, independent of both the creditor or the debtor or pwede ring upon a third person wherein, syempre, dapat walang influence si creditor or si debtor dun sa third person na yun. Okay? Kasi kung may influence sila, oh, baka babalik din lang yun sa first classification which is, which is potestative. Kasi oh, kung sakaling may influence si creditor dun sa third person na yun, o malamang-lamang, pwede natin, it's safe to say na na kay creditor din lang ang soul will, di ba? Okay? So, dapat walang influence si creditor or debtor to that third person. Kung sakaling third person man yun, nakasalalay yung condition. Okay? So, mamaya, bigyan natin yan ng example. And lastly, we have mix. So, simple lang, pag sinabi natin mix, pinaghalong potestative and casual. Okay, so fulfillment depends partly upon the will of one of the parties, so yun yung potestative, and partly upon chance and or will of a third person. Yun naman yung casual condition. So let's move on to the examples. So ayan, potestative tayo. Pero um, bago ang lahat, uh, i-remind ko muna na kapag potestative kasi, dalawa yung pwede maging senaryo natin. It may be potestative, which is dependent upon the will of the debtor, or potestative, which is dependent upon the will of the creditor. So, anahin muna natin kapag potestative yung condition, and it is uh, based on the sole will of the debtor. Okay, so, one. Kaniki obliged himself to give Toka a specific car if he will go to the mall tomorrow. Okay, so i-analyze natin. Ang obligation po ay to give to Toka a specific car. At ang condition naman to, naman dito ay Kaneki will go to the mall tomorrow. Okay, kung makapansin nyo, um, kung makapansin nyo, yung condition po natin ay nakadepende sa soul will ni Kaneki. Okay, so in this case, kung makapansin nyo, um, Uh, pag sinabi natin soul will, ibig sabihin, kung gusto ni Kaneki na pumunta ng mall, pwede niyang gawin. Pero kung hindi niya rin gusto, pwede niya rin hindi gawin. So, ganun lang yung kasimple. Okay? 
yung happening of the condition is dependent upon the debtor. Okay? So, this is a potestative suspensive condition. Okay? Um, Mayamaya, um, tatalakay natin ano ba ang ano ano ba ang implication ng potestative suspensive condition so maya maya tatalakayin natin yan okay so next kaniki oblige himself to shoulder tokas living expenses until he wants okay yung kanina di ba um yung first ano natin first classification ay according to the effect Okay, on the obligation. So, yun yung suspensive and resolutory. So, this time, uh, pinagsama natin siya. Okay? So, pagbibigyan ng example sa potestative condition, pinagsama natin siya. Kasi pw pwedeng pagsamahin niya na eh. Pwedeng potestative yung condition at the same time, it is suspensive. Gaya nga nung first example natin, kung mapapansin nyo, it is potestative as well as a suspensive condition. Sa second example naman, tignan natin. Okay, so ganun pa rin yung, ah, hindi pala. So, iba na yung obligation natin. So, ang obligation natin ay to shoulder to Tokas living expenses until he wants. Okay, so he wants, tumutukoy ulit kay Kaniki. Okay, so ito naman, isang uri ng potestative pa rin, pero this time it is a, it's a resolutory condition. Resolutory condition because the happening of the um, condition basically, uh, extinguishes the obligation of Kaniki to shoulder Toka's living expenses. Okay? Okay. So, i-analyze natin. Ano yung mga yan? Okay, meron pa palang pangalo. Okay, so tignan natin. Kaniki obliged himself to pay his debt to Toka when his means permit him to do so. Okay. Um, okay. So, itong, itong example na to, although nakalagay ito sa ano, under potestative, actually, this is not a conditional obligation. Okay, so this is an obligation with a period. Okay, so sana malinaw yun based sa uh, nabasa natin kanina na specific article. Hindi, hindi ko na maalala kung ano yung specific article na yun. 1180 ata. So, nakalagay doon kapag uh, when his means permit permit him to do so, kapag nabasa natin yung sentence na yan. Actually, may mga other sentences na parang ganyan din. So, magiging obligation with a period din yung mga yun. Okay, so obligation with a period yung mga yan. Okay? Um, furthermore, i-analyze natin, tulad ng sinasabi ko kanina, okay. So, yung first example natin, ito po ay isang void, okay. Ito po ay isang void, uh, obligation, okay. Dahil, um, ito po ay isang potestative and suspensive condition. Tatandaan nyo po, um, sa mga different, uh, di ba pinaghahalo natin yung, mga potestative and then the suspensive. Sa lahat ng mga paghahalo-halong gagawin natin na ganyan, okay, tanging itong example lang nito, number one, ang magiging void. Okay? So, tatandaan nyo po, ang void lang na condition, okay, kapag pinagsama-sama natin itong mga different types of conditions nito, ay yung potestative siya on the part of the debtor. So, tatandaan nyo siya. Tatandaan nyo na dapat potestative siya on the part of the debtor kasi Pag potestative siya on the part of the creditor, valid pa rin yun. Okay? So, tatanda nyo. Potestative siya on the part of the debtor as well as suspensive yung condition. Okay? As well as suspensive yung condition. That is a void obligation. Meaning to say, number one, okay? Itong number one, wala siya. Hindi pwede. Okay? Um, Kung baga, walang effect yung number one. Okay? Number two, ay, okay, so yan na natin. Okay, so wala na pala. Okay, so syempre yung number 2, uh, malam mo lang valid dito. Okay, yung number 3, valid dito pero hindi siya conditional obligation. Isa siyang obligation with day period. Okay, next example tayo. Okay, this time naman, creditor. So, yan na natin. Okay, ayan. Um, kanina, ang example natin ay potestative on the part of the debtor. Pero this time, on the part of the creditor, so potestative, suspensive, yung number one. Yung number two naman ay potestative, resolutory. So, kung makapansin nyo, um, halos parehas lang yung example natin. Pero, ba this time, nakatepende siya upon the will of the creditor. So, Kaniki obliged himself to give Toka 
a golden bracelet if Toka will go to the mall tomorrow. So this time, nakasalalay kay Toka or the creditor yung pagpunta sa mall tomorrow. Okay, so this is potestative on the part of the creditor as well as suspensive. Suspensive siya dahil uh, mag magkakaroon lang ng obligation if nangyari yung condition which is will go to the mall tomorrow. And number two, this time, Kaniki lets Toka live under his house until Toka wants to go home. So, nakai Toka yung um, soul will if um, tawag dito, gusto niyang tuloy-tuloy na magkaroon ng obligation si um, Kaniki, which is still, um, tawag dito, is still um, valid. Okay? Dahil, inuulit ko nga, ang tanging void lang po is yung kanina na example natin which is potestative on the part of the credit on the debtor and it is sus a suspensive condition so tatanda nyo po yun okay um so next so yan punta na naman natin yung mga different uh, types of impossible conditions so may dalawa tayong uh, types of impossible conditions so maya maya ayan na natin uh, daanan muna natin tong sumunod na article Al article 1183 so impossible conditions those contrary to good customs or public policy and those prohibited by law shall annul the obligation which depends upon them if the obligation is divisible that part thereof which is not affected by the impossible or unlawful condition shall be valid the condition not to do an impossible thing shall be considered as not having been agreed upon. So, maya maya explain natin to. Um, yung mga susunod nating discussion tungkol siya dito sa Article 1183. So, next. Okay. So, what are the two types of impossible conditions? We have, first, physically impossible conditions. So, these are the conditions that are impossible because naturally it is impossible to happen or fulfill. Okay. So, maya maya example tayo. Next are legally impossible conditions. Conditions that is naturally possible, okay? So, pwede siyang gawin actually, pero hindi siya pwedeng gawin kasi uh, bawal sa batas, okay? Uh, according so, sa batas, sa morals, sa good customs, sa public order or public policy. So, ano yung mga examples natin? So, nandito. Okay? Ano yung mga examples natin? Under physical impossible, oh, fly to the moon. Um, Actually, hindi na ito um, so, uh, rocket, parang ganun, di ba? Okay, pero, hindi, siguro, dahil dun sa word na fly, okay, lilipad, oh, yung flying itself is not, ano eh, actually, um, without the use of certain vehicles, di ba? So, okay, so, don't take it, ano na lang. Okay, so, siguro, impossible for the common human being. Okay. <laughs> So, swim across the Pacific Ocean. So, ito talagang imposible ito. Okay. Um, not rain in the Philippines for a decade. So, imposible din dahil na rin sa, syempre, yung, uh, yung mismong lugar natin which is very unlikely na mangyari ito. Dahil na, it's na tayong tropical country, di ba? So, drill a hole through the Earth's core. So, marami na nag-attempt niyan pero... Uh, ni hindi pa tumatagos or hindi pa nakakalapit dun sa end of the crust of the earth. So, wala. And lastly, resurrect the dead. So, wala pang nakakagawa niyan. Okay. So, ayan. Next naman, punta tayo sa legally impossible. Okay. So, first is kill someone. Okay. So, nandito kill X. Okay. So, it is against the law, obviously. Okay. Next naman, be the mistress of X. So, it's against morals. Pero it's against the law also, di ba? Okay, so it's against morals. So slap your father, although walang, siguro walang nakalagay, or siguro may nakalagay, pero very uh, general lang na syempre, uh, igalang ang parents, parang ganun, di ba? So kailangan sumunod. May mga bata sa atin na ganun, pero medyo vague siya. So pag sinampal mo, it's against uh, basically good customs. So, Dito sa Philippines, nakagawian ng mga, uh, tawag dito, ng mga anak na sumunod sa mga magulang. <laughs> okay. So, advocate the overthrow of government. So, this is against public order. This is treason. Okay. Not appear as witness in a criminal case. So, this is a against public policy dahil 
criminal case ito eh. Okay. So criminal case ito. Um so this is against public policy. Okay? So next, illustration. Okay. So ang illustrate natin dito this time is yung ano, second or siguro yung nasa first paragraph pa rin pero yung sinasabi niya ano, um the obligations which are not affected by the uh, impossible conditions blah 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 na binanggit niya. So dito is illustrate natin ko ano ibig sabihin ba nun. Okay? So not so bound himself to give Lucy 10,000 if the latter can win in an arm wrestling match against Erza. Furthermore, not so promised to pay additional 5,000 if Lucy can seriously injure Erza's arm. Okay. So, ano ba ito? Okay, yan na natin. Um, okay, so this is partially void actually. So, bakit siya partially void lang, hindi siya wholly void? Dahil, kung mapapansin nyo, um, ilang obligation ba ang nandito? Um, actually, maraming obligation na nandito. O, pag sinabi natin marami, syempre two or more, di ba? So, meron tayong obligation to give 10,000. And, hanapin natin yung isa. Additional 5,000. Okay, so, those are two separate obligations. Um, therefore, um, taking this situation as a whole, it's only partially void. Okay, ano ang partially void dito? Itong obligation lang nito, yung magbigay ng additional 5,000. If uh, Lucy can seriously injure Erza's arm. So, this is, syempre, itong condition na to ay, um, this is, ano, illegal. Okay, so, this is an impossible condition. So, hindi to pwede. Okay, pero yung nauna, yung can win in an arm wrestling match against Erza, so this is completely valid. So, okay yung obligation natin which is to give 10,000. Okay, so this is, okay, as a whole, this illustration or this example is only partially void. Okay, so next illustration. Not so bound himself to give Lucy 15,000 if the latter can win in an arm wrestling match against Erza and can seriously injure Erza's arm. Okay, so this time naman, yung obligation natin, Iisa lang. Okay? Pero may dalawa tayong conditions. Di ba? Okay? Yung dalawang conditions na yon ay nakabind sa iisang obligation. So, making the whole obligation, okay? Wholly void. Okay? So, yun lang yung gustong sabihin nung article kanina. Okay? Na binasa natin. Okay? So, ayan. Next, let's go on with positive and negative conditions. So, siguro simple lang to positive and negative. Okay, so tingnan natin. Um, article 1184 actually refers to a positive uh, condition. So, maya maya example natin to. The condition that some event happen at a determinate time shall extinguish the obligation as soon as the time expires or it has become indubitable that the event will not take place. Okay. And while Article 1185 refers to a negative condition this time, the condition that some event will not happen okay, at a determinate time shall render the obligation effective from the moment the time indicated has elapsed or if it has become evident that the event cannot occur. So, tingnan natin. So, positive condition. Uh, example tayo kaagad. So, Bartra bound himself to give Elizabeth a land if Elizabeth will marry Meliodas within the year. Okay. Dahil, okay, kung mapapansin nyo, ito ang ating condition, will marry Meliodas within a year. So, ito ay isang, tama, positive. Very simple lang actually. Ang uh, distinction between the positive and negative condition. Um, when we say passive, con positive condition, it refers to um, uh, usually will do, will uh, will do or will give. Uh, ho however, kapag negative naman, nandyan yung word na not, okay? Not, will not do, will not give, or whatsoever. Basta will not Okay, yung negative. So, siguro madali lang naman yung intindihin. Okay, so, basahin natin yung next. Bartra bound himself to give Elizabeth a land if Elizabeth will not marry Meliodas within the year. So, baliktad naman this time. So, i-analyze natin yan. Yung dalawang uh, conditions na yan. Or dalawang obligations with 
positive condition and negative condition. Okay. Um, okay, medyo, ano to, when conditions are dim fulfilled, ayan, okay, ano yung, tapos, okay, so, ano ba yan, okay, so, basahin mo natin to, before going through with, do, with that example, so, if no time has been fixed, the condition shall be dim fulfilled at such time as may have probably been contemplated, bearing in mind the nature of the obligation, and next, Article 1186, the condition shall be deemed fulfilled when the obliger voluntarily prevents its fulfillment. Okay. So, ayan. Mm, ah, okay. So, wala nang... Okay, so never mind. Okay. Balikan mo na natin to. Okay, balikan na lang natin to. Okay, dito ko na lang i-explain. Okay. So, yung positive condition, yung kaninang nabasa natin na ano, Article 1184, the condition that some event happen at a determinate time shall extinguish the obligation as soon as the time expires or it has become indubitable that the event will not take place. Okay, so tingnan natin. So may dalawa tayo dyan. Um, okay. So Bartra bound himself to give Elizabeth a land if uh, Elizabeth will marry Meliodas within the year. Okay. Um, ang mangyayari is, ito ay isang obligation with a positive condition. Um, pag inintindi natin ito, Kapag pinakasalan ni Elizabeth si Meliodas within the year, doon magde-take effect yung obligation ni Bartra which is to give Elizabeth ilan, di ba? Yan. Pero kung hindi niya siya napa, hindi niya ito napakasalan within the year or naglaps yung uh, one year pero yun nga hindi pa rin sila married, ang mangyayari is may extinguish na yung obligation. So, yun lang yung sinasabi nung Article 1184 kung binalikan natin. Sabi niya dito, the condition that some event happen at a determinate time shall extinguish the obligation as soon as the time expires. So, yun. As soon as the time expires. So, kapag nag-expire ang one year, hindi pa napapakasalan ni Elizabeth si Meliodas. Okay? Nag-expire na yung one year. May extinguish na yung obligation ni Bartra. Okay ba? Okay. Next naman, meron pa siyang sinabi, ano ba yan? Um, or, it it has become indubitable that the event will not take place. Okay. So, let's say, hindi pa nagalaps yung one year. Pero, ang nangyari, namatay si Meliodas. Okay. So, possible pa ba na mangyari yung condition? In that case, hindi na possible na mangyari yung condition. So, at that time, extinguish na yung obligation ni Bartra. Because it's already indubitable, okay, that the event will not take place. Yun lang yung sabihin nun. Okay? Next naman, punta tayo sa negative condition. Explain natin to. So, sign natin, Bartra bound himself to give Elizabeth a land if Elizabeth will not marry Meliodas within the year. Okay. So, balikan natin yung 80, Article 1185, Paragraph 1. The condition that some event will not happen at a determinate uh, time, so ito yung, ano, ito yung obligation with a negative condition, shall render the obligation effective. Okay, effective. Maging effective daw yung obligation. From the moment the time indicated has elapsed or naglapsed na, or if it has become evident that the event cannot occur. So, tingnan natin. Um, so, kapag naglapsed na yung one year, okay, okay, so, ayan na natin. So, kapag naglapsed na yung one year, okay, ibig sabihin, na hindi pa pinapakasalan ni Elizabeth si Meliodas, ibig sabihin, from that time, magiging effective na yung obligation ni Bartra. Okay? Just like as indicated in Article 1185, Paragraph 1, di ba? Shall render the obligation effective from the moment the time indicated has elapsed. Or, okay, so, or, ano yan? It has become evident that the event cannot occur. So, ano yung evident? Okay, so, ganun pa rin. Let's say, namatay si Meliodas. ba? Let's say, namatay si Meliodas within the, uh, within the year. So, hindi pa naglalaps, ba? Pero namatay si Meliodas. Hindi na natin kailangang hintayin yung within the year na maglaps dahil it's obviously hindi na mangyayari yung condition. Tama? At kung hindi na mangyayari yung condition, ba? Sure na na hindi mangyayari yung condition. From that time, yung obligation ni Bartra magiging effective na. Okay? So, that's what indicated in the Article 1185. Or, if it has become evident that the event cannot occur. 
Okay? So, ayan. Next slide. When conditions are deemed fulfilled. So, pag sinabi natin deemed fulfilled, although hindi nag nagawa or na-fulfill yung condition, as if fulfilled siya. Okay? Kunwaring fulfilled siya for the sake na uh, for the sake na magkaroon siya ng effect dun sa obligation. Okay? Um, so, may mga certain instances lang ng, ng mga ito. Okay? So, nandyan, Article 1185, Paragraph 2. If no time has been fixed, the condition shall be deemed fulfilled at such time as may have been, uh, probably been contemplated, bearing in mind the nature of the obligation. Okay? Ito yung first instance natin. When a condition is deemed fulfilled. Next naman is Article 1186. The condition shall be deemed fulfilled when the obligor voluntarily prevents its fulfillment. So, let's take an example. Okay, so ayan. Bart trabang himself to give Elizabeth Elan if Elizabeth will not marry Meliodas until Elizabeth and Meliodas are both ready. Okay? Both really ready to be a family. So, Bart trabang himself to give Elizabeth Elan if Elizabeth will marry Meliodas within the year. Okay, hindi, hindi. Okay. So, unahin muna natin tong first. So, dalawang magkaibang ano pala yan. Dalawang uh, separate examples yan. So, iyan, um, yung first example natin, it refers to the first uh, instance kung kailan dim fulfilled. Okay, dim fulfilled yung tawag dito. Dim fulfilled yung condition. So, ano ba yung una nating instance? Yung una nating instance ay Article 1185, Paragraph 2. So, ano bang sinasabi nito? If no time has been fixed, so walang time down na na fix, the condition shall be deemed fulfilled at such time as may have probably been contemplated, bearing in mind the nature of the obligation. Okay. So, dito, obviously, walang nakalagay nga na time. So, kailan yang until Elizabeth and Meliodas are both really ready to be a family? So, uh, medyo, di ba, walang specific time na nakalagay. Okay. Pero, uh, from the nature of the obligation, masasabi natin, na yung condition na yan, siguro, um, in real, ano, in real application sa buhay natin, yung pagiging ready, normally, kapag nakatapos na, may trabaho na, na stable, ganun, ready na magpakasal, whatsoever, di ba? Ready na magkaanak. So, yun yung time. Okay? So, in this case, ang magiging interpretation natin dito, na ang time na tinutukoy doon, ay, yun yung time na yun, di ba? kung kailan ready na talaga sila. Okay, nakatapos na or what? So ever. So, yun yung tinutukoy doon. Okay? Hindi hindi porket walang time na nakalagay is i-interpret natin yung obligation na ah, walang nakalagay no time. So, oh, pwede kong pilosopohin never naman ata na silang naging ready o oh, parang ganoon, di ba? Wala namang sinabi dun sa problem na um, na time or whatsoever. Okay? So, therefore, this is the condition is parang kubaga impossible so hindi pwedeng maging obligation di ba? actually hindi pwede pa rin maging obligation to dahil o pwede natin in this case i-assume yung time okay dahil yun nga expressly sinabi sa article 1185 okay na deemed fulfilled siya at such time okay at such time as may have been contemplated okay so, bearing in mind the nature of the obligation. Okay? Kung baga, ito yung parang, kung baga, ano ba yung mag, parang uh, intention dun sa specific scenario na yun. Okay? So, next example naman tayo. Uh, ito naman yung Article 1186 wherein the obligor voluntarily prevents its fulfillment. So, in this case, the obligor is Bartra. Okay? Bartra bound himself to give Elizabeth a land if Elizabeth will marry Meliodas within the year. The night before... Okay, the night before the last of the year. Okay, so last day of the year. The night before the last day of the year, Bartra put drugs on Elizabeth's food, resulting to Elizabeth being asleep for three days. Okay, so ang condition ay kapag pinakasalan ni Meliodas or ni Elizabeth si Meliodas within this year. Pero dahil nga, anong ginawa ni Bartra? nilagyan niya ng ano sleep sleeping drugs or whatsoever okay basta yun ang naging cause kung bakit si Elizabeth ay tulog for 3 days sa kalain mo yun okay so in this case it was Bartra who voluntarily prevented okay the happening of the condition so although hindi nangyari yung condition it is 
according to Article 1186, it is deemed fulfilled. So, in this case, magiging effective na yung obligation ni Bartra, which is, ano, to give Elizabeth a land. Okay? So, basahin natin ulit. The condition shall be deemed fulfilled when the obligor voluntarily prevents its fulfillment. Okay? So, sana naging malinaw yun. Okay. Next, puntahan naman natin ang retroactive effects in suspensive conditions. Um, siguro yung word na retroactive, na-encounter nyo na yan sa mga accounting subjects nyo. Okay, siguro sa ayun, accounting 5, bata yun, sa um, part ng mga, okay, so mga discontinued, mga ganun, bumangil. Okay, never mind. So, punta natin. Retroactive effect. Article 1187. The effects of a conditional obligation to give once the condition has been fulfilled, shall retroact to the day of the constitution of the obligation. Nevertheless, when the obligation imposes reciprocal prestations upon the parties, the fruits and interests during the pendency of the condition shall be deemed to have been mutually compensated. If the obligation is unilateral, the debtor shall appropriate the fruits and interests received unless, un, un, unless, okay, unless, from the nature and circumstances of the condi uh, of the obligation, it should be inferred that the intention of the person constituting the same was different. In obligations to do and not to do, the court shall determine in each case the retroactive effect of the condition that has been complied with. Okay, so i-summarize natin yan. Kung ano ba yan. Um, so in obligations to give, uh, mamaya, iyan na natin yan, yung obligations to give. Okay. Sa next slide yon yung detail ng obligation to give. So, pag obligation to do and not to do, simple lang. Walang retroactive effect dahil, hindi. I, what I mean is, um, hanggat hindi pa sinasabi, okay, ng korte kung ano yung decision niya with regards to the, to its retroactive effect, wala tayong ipipresume na retroactive effect under obligations to do and not to do. Okay, dahil si Korte ang magdedetermine ng retroactive effect. Okay, pero in obligations to give, meron tayong guidelines dito. Okay, so ayan, next slide. Oh, oh, okay, meron tayong example pala. Okay, so example. So this is an obligation to give. Okay, a diamond ring. Taki promise Mitsuha a diamond ring. So this is obviously a, a, an obligation to give. If Mitsuha graduates valedictorian from her class. Okay. So, on January 1, okay. So, based from this, ano, based from this, uh, what do you call this? Um, example, i-determine natin yung retroactive effect. So, on January 1, yun yung time when Taki promised Mitsuha a specific, okay, so medyo na iba. Okay, so never mind. So, ito na lang. Focus na lang tayo dito sa example na to. So, on January 1, 2019, Taki promised Mitsuha a specific car if Mitsuha graduates valedictorian from her class. So, obviously, this is a suspensive condition, di ba? Or obligation with a suspensive condition, okay? Um, assuming or assume Mitsuha graduates valedictorian from her class on April 11, 2019, okay? So, tingnan natin. Mayroon tayong dalawang dates dito. So, January 1 and April 11. Okay, 2019. Okay, so, obviously, okay. <laughs> Ginawa siya ng 2019. Okay. Um, so, ayun. Um, tawag dito. Um, ano ang retroactive effect na sinasabi natin dito? So, ang retroactive effect po is... Uh, in this case, obligation to give, um, as if, okay, kailan naging may-ari si Mitsuha nung specific car? Okay? Si Mitsuha ay as if may-ari nung specific car, as if nung January 1 lang, January 1 pa lang. Okay? Because, ang reason, nagre-retroact, di ba? Nagre-retroact. Nagre-retroact to the time, okay, or, I mean, nagre-retroact from the time the obligation was constituted. The obligation was constituted on on January 1, 2019. It, it was only suspended because of this suspensive condition. 
yung to graduate valedictorian from our class. Okay? Pero nangyari. Okay? So, pero nangyari lang nung April 11. Okay? So, in this case, pag ang tanong ng problem, kailan naging may-ari si Mitsuha ng specific car? Our answer will be this. On January 1, 2019. Because the ownership retroacts. Okay? Okay. So, ayan. Di ba? So, okay. Walikan muna natin to. What if, um, so this is obviously, anong klaseng, ano to, um, under obligation to give, this is a unilateral obligation. So, nandito rin, unilateral obligation. Okay. Pero may binanggit tayo with regards to rules on the fruits and interests. So, ano yung rules sa, Uh, interest, di ba? Fruits and interest. Um, simple lang, sabi dito, fruits and interest received shall be appropriated by the debtor. Sinong debtor? Um, oh, sa ating previous example, the debtor is Taki, okay? Pero may bago tayong example dyan para mas ma-illustrate ng maayos itong binanggit ng rule na ito ng article 11, ano ba yan? 11, hindi ko memorize ang mga 1187. Okay, so ayan. So, tingnan natin. Ayan. On January 1, Miyuki promised Tatsuya to give him an apartment building if Tatsuya passes the board exam. On May 31, Tatsuya passed the said exam. Okay? So, gaya nung ano kanina, gaya nung kaninang example, pag tinanong sa problem, kailan naging may-ari si Tatsuya do sa apartment building? It will retroact to the day of the constitution of the obligation because the condition merely suspends okay the effectiveness of the condition but does not suspend the kung kailan talaga nag, naging may aris tatsu ya okay so kapag ganun ang question your answer yun, your answer will be January 1 okay pero what ano mangyayari dun sa mga fruits and interest so dahil ito ay isang apartment building, malamang namang nagkaroon ito ng fruits, which is in the form of rent, di ba? So, yung rent from January 1 to May 31, kasi sinasabi natin, um, as if si Tatsuya may ari na nung January 1. So, dapat ba mapunta sa kanya yung rent from January 1 to May 31? The answer is, no. Okay? Although siya ang may ari from January 1 pa lang, considered na may ari from January 1 pa lang, Malinaw sa Article 1187 na kapag ito ay isang unilateral obligation, the fruits and interest received shall be appropriated by the debtor. Malinaw na malinaw po yan. At sino si debtor? Si Miyugi. Okay? Na previous owner ng apartment, di ba? So, it will be appropriated. Ibig sabihin, kay debtor yun. Okay? Malinaw na malinaw. Unless, meron pala silang separate na kasunduan. Okay? Pero in this case, wala namang nabanggit na ganun. So, therefore, mag apply yung rule natin sa Article 1187. So, ganun lang po yung kasimple. What if ito naman ay isang reciprocal obligation? ba? Diba? Pag sinabi natin reciprocal obligation, unlike sa unilateral kasi, yung unilateral, isang party lang ang merong uh, obligation dun sa isa. Well, in reciprocal, both of them are, ano, both of them will ano, are obligated to give or to do something to each other. Pero in this case, syempre, um, yung may retroactive effect lang kasi na rule is yung obligation to give. So, we are referring to oblig reciprocal obligation with obligation, uh, in an obligation to give, not, ob uh, not reciprocal obligations uh, under obligation to do or not to do. Okay? So, dito, Example, on January 1, Miyuki promised Tatsuya to sell him. Okay? This time, sell. And selling a property, okay, meaning may obligation yung buyer and seller. Di ba? So, si buyer, bayaran yung seller to sell or to deliver the property. Okay? To sell him an apartment building if Tatsuya passes the board exam. On May 31, Tatsuya passed the said exam. Okay. So, ganun ulit. With regards to ownership, Tatsuya, okay, was the owner on January 1. Okay? However, okay, however, what of the fruits? Okay? Anong mangyayari sa fruits? Under Article 1187, 
fruits and interest are deemed mutually compensated. Ano ba sana yung magiging fruits? Okay. Pag apartment, yung rent. Pag pera, syempre yun yung ano eh, kapalit, di ba? Yun yung kapalit kasi reciprocal siya. Kasi ano to? Sell to sell, di ba? Contract of sale. So, yung apartment, ang fruits niya ay rent. Ano yung naman yung fruits ng pera na pambabayad? Yun naman yung interest, di ba? So, both both uh, both objects, okay? Merong ano, parang kung mag, uh, merong, merong fruits, okay? Pero, under Article 1187, hindi na ibibigay yung mga fruits na yan. It will be deemed mutually compensated. As if na mutually compensate na ibig sabihin para hindi na magulo ang buhay okay hindi na ibibigay ni Miyuki yung uh, fruits ng apartment as well as si Tatsuya hindi niya na rin ibibigay yung fruits ng pera okay or the interest ng pera di ba okay so in this case it is deemed mutually compensated okay so ganun lang kasimple yun okay pagdating ng May 31 simpleng delivery and simpleng pagbabayad lang ng pera ang gagawin. Ganun lang yun. Wala nang uh, restoration ng mga fruits and interest. Kasi it is deemed mutually compensated. Okay? So, next tayo. What are the rights of the creditor and debtor in a conditional obligation? Okay? So, Article 1188, the creditor may before the fulfillment of the condition, bring the appropriate actions for the preservation of his right. Okay. Second paragraph. The debtor may recover what during the same time he has paid by mistake in case of suspensive condition. So, mukhang simple lang. Okay. Example. Oma promised Carla a specific dog for her birthday. So, okay. Ito muna. Ito yung first paragraph, yung the creditor may, before the fulfillment of the condition, bring the appropriate actions for the preservation of his right. So, example muna tayo. Oma promised Carla a specific dog for her birthday. So, in this case, um, hindi pa dumarating yung birthday ni Carla. Okay? Pero yung specific dog, ang nangyayari is malapit nang mamatay kasi hindi pinapakain ni Oma. So, in this case, si Carla... Carla may bring an action for the preservation of the dog. Ibig sabihin, uh, meron siyang right na, although hindi pa, hindi pa kanya talaga yung, parang kung mga physically kanya yung dog, meron siyang right to bring an action for the preservation of that specific dog. Ibig sabihin, pakainin or what, di ba? So, meron siyang right na gawin yun para ma-preserve. Kasi ang mangyayari, di ba, kapag obligation to give a specific thing, Kapag namatay, syempre, yung specific thing na yun, uh, hindi siya pwedeng substitutan ng other obligation. Ano na lang, damages, di ba? Or monetary. Eh, paano kung si Carla gusto niya talaga yung specific dog na yun? Okay, so, yun. Pwede niyang, uh, pwede siyang mag-bring ng action for the preservation of that specific dog until, okay, until her birthday. Okay, kasi from that time, dun na talaga niya makukuha yung dog physically. Okay? Next example tayo. Carla has a 10,000 peso debt to Oma payable after 3 years. One year before maturity, having thought that 3 years already elapsed, uh, uh, paid Oma. Okay, so, Carla paid Oma the 10,000 debt. So, anong nangyari dito? Akala niya, um, ano na, June na, or nagmature na yung utang, or kailangan niya ng bayaran. So, ito naman si Oma, wala siyang binanggit. So, parang kumaga hindi siya umimik nung binayaran na sa kanya. Hindi niya sinabi na hindi pa naman 3 years. Ah. Parang ganun. So, in this case, ah, nagkaroon dito ng parang uh, siguro pwede natin maipasok dito yung ano, principle of ano, surusyo in debity wherein um, nabayaran niya through mistake. So, merong obligation dito sa OMA na ibalik kasi hindi pa naman due. Okay? At from the time na hindi niya pa binabalik, Uh, siyempre may mag-aakrong interest doon. So, for example, ganito. Um, after one year, binayaran niya through mistake. So, ang nangyari is, naglapse ang six months. Tapos, doon na-realize ni Carla. Oh ma, binayaran na pala kita kaagad. Okay, so, ibalik mo muna sa akin. Hindi pa nag 
lalaps yung 3 years. Okay? Um, in addition to the 10,000 na paid by mistake, kailangan niya ring bayaran, kailangan ring bayarin ng OMA yung interest for the 6 months na nasa sa kanya yung pera na supposedly dapat ginagamit ni Carla. Okay? So, yun yung ano dito, rule dito. Okay? So, next. Punta naman natin yung last topic under conditional obligations. What are the rules in case of loss, deterioration, or improvement of a thing during the pendency of the condition? So, ayan. These are the rules. Nasa Article 1189. When the conditions have been imposed with the intention of suspending the efficacy, so this is simply referring to suspensive condition of an obligation to give, the following rules shall be observed in case of the improvement, loss, or deterioration of the thing during the pendency of the condition. If the thing is lost without the fault of the debtor, the obligation shall be extinguished. Okay? So, maybe it's due to fortuitous event. So, number one. Kasi kung hindi fault ng debtor, malamang lang fortuitous event yun. Okay, number two naman. If the thing is lost through the fault of the debtor, shall be obliged to pay damages. It is understood that the thing is lost when it perishes, goes out of commerce, or disappears in such a way that its existence is unknown or it cannot be recovered. Okay? Number three. Three and four refers to, ano naman? Deterioration. When the thing deteriorates without the fault of the debtor, the impairment is to be borne by the creditor. Okay? So, ibibigyan niya na na ganun, na medyo sira dahil, o, oh, di ba? Hindi niya naman kasalanan kung bakit nag-deteriorate, di ba? Okay, number four. If the deterioration, if it deteriorates through the fault of the debtor, the creditor may choose between the rescission of the obligation and its fulfillment with indemnity for damages in either cases or in either case. Number five and number six naman, it refers to um, improvement. If the thing is improved by its nature or by time, the improvement shall inure to the benefit of the creditor. If it is improved at the expense of the debtor naman, he shall have no other right than that granted to the usual fractuary. So, ang ibig sabihin ng number 6, kahit na gumastos ka, okay, kahit na ginastusan mo yung bagay na yun, hindi mo pwedeng mapareimburse yung gastos mo doon. Okay? Ang pwede mo nang gawin is, it's either tanggalin yung mga improvements na nilagay mo, or huwag tanggalin. <laughs> Ibigay mo na lang sa kanya, di ba? At isa pa, hindi mo pwedeng tanggalin yung mga improvements kung ito ay magkukos ng damage dun sa principal object. Okay? So, ito po yung ano natin, um, summary in table. Okay? So, loss, deterioration, or improvement. So, ayan. So, nabanggit na natin. Okay? So, ayan. The actor may remove improvement provided the thing will not be damaged by reason of the removal. Okay, ito naman, very important dito number 2. Okay? He can offset any improvement to damages he may pay by reason of deterioration of the thing through his fault. So, for example, nag-improve yung bagay, okay? Nag-improve yung bagay, pero at the same time, nag-deteriorate. Okay? Um, di ba sabi natin kapag ito ay nag-deteriorate through the debtor's fault, so, for example, debtor's fault na, okay? Uh, magbabayad siya ng damages. Okay? So, may choose between rescission, fulfillment, Okay, pero may damages sa both uh, instances. So, assuming damages, okay, may damages na babayaran. Yung babayaran yung damages, pwede niyang i-minus doon yung, pwede niyang ibawas yung mga improvement na nailagay niya. Okay, so ganun lang, para medyo mamitigate yung damages na babayaran niya. Okay, next, article 1190, okay, so hindi pa, pa, hindi pa pala yun yung last, okay. Okay, so... What is Article 1190? Oh, marami pa. Okay, so, yun. Um, okay, Article 1191. The power to rescind obligation is implied in reciprocal ones. In case one of the obligers should not comply with what is incumbent upon him, okay, so, ayan, the injured party may choose between the fulfillment and the rescission of the obligation. With the payment of damages in either case, he may also seek rescission even after he has chosen fulfillment if the latter should become impossible. 
the court shall decree the rescission claim unless there be just cause authorizing the fixes, fixing of a period. This is understood to be without prejudice to the rights of third persons who have acquired the thing in accordance with Article 1385 and 1388 and the mortgage law. So, what is this? Okay, so, ayan. Meron tayong example. Okabe sold to Kurisu uh, his flat screen TV. There was no stipulation regarding delivery of the TV and the payment of the price. Ah, okay. Ah, okay. So, ang tinutukoy dito sa example na to, actually, this is what you call a reciprocal obligation. Um, kasi pag sinabi natin reciprocal, um, both, okay, both parties are, okay, parang kumbaga, meron siya lang, silang obligation sa bawat isa. Pero not only that. Okay, not only that. Wala ring nabanggit na, ano, wala ring nabanggit na terms with regards to the payment and with regards to the delivery for example in this case yung uh, in this case uh, contract of sale di ba so in this case walang time walang condition na nakalakip walang period or condition na nakalakip doon sa mga obligations ng bawat isa so in this case ganito ang rule dito kapag reciprocal from the time okay nagawin nung isa yung kanyang obligation that's the time na kailangan na rin gawin ng isa. So, in this case, kapag nagbayad, okay, si Kuriso, kailangan na rin i-deliver ni Okabe kaagad yung TV. And vice versa. Kapag bin, uh, dineliver yung TV, kailangan magbayad na rin. Okay? So, this is a, what you call a reciprocal obligation. Okay? Pag sinabi naman nating non-reciprocal, merong time, okay? Merong time or condition na nakalakip, okay? Pero it doesn't necessarily mean na hindi siya bilateral. Kasi yung bilateral, yun yung ano eh, meron kang obligation sa bawat isa, okay? Yung both parties meron yung obligation sa bawat isa, okay? Pero yung ano natin, yung bilateral obligation, mahahati pa siya into two, di ba? Reciprocal and non-reciprocal. So yun yung pagkakaiba ng reciprocal at non-reciprocal, okay? Although both sila under ng bilateral, hindi sila, kumbaga, hindi pareho yung effect. Okay? So, ayan. So, this is, ano, it refers to reciprocal, yung 1191. How about 1192? In both, in case both parties have committed a breach of the obligation, the liability of the first infractor shall be in a shall be equitably tempered by the courts if it cannot be determined which of the parties first violated the contract the same shall be deemed extinguished and each shall bear his own damages okay so simple lang um um sa isang let's say isang kontrata wherein syempre pag usually pag kontrata ano eh yung both parties meron silang obligation sa bawat isa okay at hindi ano hindi malabo na yung mga party sa isang contract ay magloko di ba okay so yun yung sinasabi dito okay so wala tang example so banggitin ko na lang um simple lang kapag for example in a contract so meron tayong ano uh, yung let's say isang contract of sale okay so may dalawang parties buyer and seller so kapag unang nagloko ay si seller ang mangyayari ay Siyempre, meron siyang liability, meron siyang babayaran damages under the contract of sale. Okay? Pero what if nagloko din si buyer, di ba? So, unang nagloko si seller. Pangalawang nagloko si buyer. Okay? Ang mangyayari is, ang i-determine yung babayaran damages ay si seller. Siyempre kasi siya yung unang nagloko. Malay mo, nagloko lang si buyer kasi nagloko, ri- nagloko si seller. Kaya nagloko na rin si buyer, di ba? So, ayan. So, ang unang i-compute na babayarang damages ay si seller. Okay? At, babawasan na lang siya, okay, based on the, ano, ginawang pagluloko ni buyer. So, babawasan na lang yun. So, parang kung mag all in all, pag na, na, nakaneto, pag ininet, ang may babayaran lang is si seller. Kasi siya yung unang nagloko. Pero what if, hindi natin ma-determine kung sino yung unang nagloko. Pero sure tayo na parehong, parehong party ay nagloko. Simple lang. The obligation, Okay, shall be deemed extinguished and both parties shall bear their own damages. So, bahala na sila.
Okay? So, ganun lang yun, yung Article 1192. Okay? So, that's the end of the obligation or pure and conditional obligation. Let's go to the uh, obligation with the period naman this time. So, uh, ano bang pagkakaiba ng uh, condition at period? So, maya-maya, banggitin natin yun or i-determine natin kung ano nga bang pagkakaiba nun. Okay? Okay. So, let's go back to Article 1193. Obligations for whose fulfillment a day certain has been fixed shall be demandable only when that day comes. Okay, next. Obligations with a resolutory period take effect at once. So, ito yung nabanggit natin kanina. Um, kapag ang mga obligations lang na nag-take effect at once ay lahat ng pure obligations and lahat ng obligations with resolutory period or resolutory condition. Okay? So, next, a day certain is understood to be which must necessarily come, although it may not be known when. Okay? So, although it may not be known when. So, mamaya may example tayo dyan. If the uncertainty consists in whether the day will come or not, the obligation is conditional. Okay? And it shall be regulated by the rules of the preceding section. Okay? So, tignan natin. So, may dalawang uri ng uh, period. So, meron tayong suspensive period and resolutory period. So, ito rin yung ibang tawag, ex die and in diem. So, these are period that makes the obligation demandable. So, ganun din. Paras din. Um, kapag dumating yung period, yung suspensive period, that's the time na magiging demandable yung obligation. Just like in suspensive condition. Uh, pagdating naman sa resolutory period, ganun din. Kapag dumating yung resolutory period na yan, it will terminate or extinguish the obligation. Just like in a resolutory condition. Okay? So, what's the difference between a condition and a period? Simply lang. From the first row, makikita na natin kaagad yung major difference between a condition and a period. A condition is an uncertain event, while a period, a certain event. Ibig sabihin, siguradong mangyayari yung period, while a condition is hindi siguradong mangyayari. Okay? So, a condition affects the existence of the obligation. Kasi kung merong period, may possibility na merong obligation, may possibility rin na walang obligation. However, obligations with a period, siguradong may obligation. It only affects yung kung kailan magiging demandable yung tawag dito, uh, yung obligation. Okay. So, when it comes to condition, meron siyang retroactive effect, just like yung na-discuss natin kanina. However, uh, obligations with a period has no retroactive effect. Walang ganong rule yung nabanggit natin kanina sa Article 1187. Okay? A suspensive condition left to the will of the debtor okay, makes the obligation void. Ito yung suspensive condition potestative on the part of the debtor. Di ba sabi natin yun yung void? However, a suspensive period which is dependent upon the sole will of the debtor is still valid. Okay? Dahil yun nga lang ang void, yung pagdating sa condition. Suspensive condition, sus, uh, potestive on the part of the debtor. Okay? So, that's the only void. Okay? Next, may refer to a future uncertain event or it may also refer to a past unknown event to the parties, di ba? Or past event unknown to the parties. So, nabanggit natin yan sa unang-unang part pa lang ng ating discussion. And however, period refers only to future day certain. Okay? It only refers to the future. Okay? So, next. Okay. So, next, let's determine um, ito yung ano kanina. Nabanggit natin kanina. So, conditional obligation. So, umali. This must be obligations with a period. Okay? Obligations with a period. Obligations with a 
period. So, hindi tayo na... 1194. In case of loss, deterioration, or improvement of the thing before the arrival of the day certain, the rules in Article 1189, ito po yung sa, art, uh, sa conditional obligation. Parehas din lang po siya kapag period. Okay? So, ganyan lang. Loss, deterioration, and improvement during dependency of a period. So, ayan. Parehas na parehas po yung rules natin dyan. Okay? So, ayan. Ang maiiba lang is, yung kanina, pendency of the condition, while ngayon, pendency of the period. Okay, so what are the rights of the debtor in an obligation with a period? So, ayan. Article 1195, anything paid or delivered before the arrival of the period, the obligor being unaware of the period or believing that the condition has become due and demandable, may be recovered with the fruits and interest. So, I believe na discuss na natin yan kanina. Okay, so benefit of the period. So, kaninong benefit? Binibigay yung period. So, every time na nag-establish tayo ng period or whenever in an obligation, a period is designated, it is presumed to have been established for the benefit of both the creditor and the debtor. Unless the tenor of the same or other circumstances, it should appear that the period has been established in favor of one or of the other. So, anong ibig sabihin nito? Ang general rule po natin, every time na meron tayong period, benefit po yun ng both creditor and debtor. Unless uh, obvious dun sa example natin or problem natin na benefit lang siya ni creditor or benefit lang siya ni debtor. So, paano natin madedetermine yun? Okay. So, in this case, Sakaido borrowed 500,000 with 12% interest from Cairo. The principal and interest will mature after 12 months. Okay. So, paano natin nasabi na ito po ay uh, yung benefit of the period, which is yung period po dito ay 12 months. Paano po natin nasabi na yung 12 months ay for the for both the benefit of the debtor, sino bang debtor? Ito, si Sakaido, and the creditor. Okay? Kasi ganito yan. Um, si Sakaido, magbabayad lang siya after 12 months. Yun yung time na nagmabamature yung obligation. At the same time, ganun din si Cairo. Makakapag-single lang siya after 12 months. Okay. So, ganito yun. Hindi pwedeng bayaran ni Sakaido yung kanyang utang before. Okay. Before the maturity date. Kasi ganito yan. First of all, um, ang kasunduan ay 12 months. So, ibig sabihin kapag pinabayaran sa kanya yun ni Cairo before 12 months, ibig sabihin, um, yung supposedly magagamit niya pa sana yung pera for 12 months, hindi na, kasi mabayaran niya na, di ba? So, yun, parang kung mag disadvantage yun kay Sakaido. At the same time, disadvantage din yung kay Cairo, kasi ang mangyayari is, hindi na mababayaran yung interest. So, kapag binayaran na siya after 6 months, ang mag lang ng interest ay for 6 months. Di ba? So, yung supposedly interest income ni Cairo ay, uh, syempre, wala na. Di ba? So, yun. Um, every time na merong period that is established both Okay? For the benefit of both the debtor and the creditor. Okay? In this instance. So, ayan. Okay. Sakaido cannot compel Cairo to accept payment before maturity as it will deprive Cairo from maximizing the interest. Number two, on the other hand, Cairo cannot compel Sakaido to make payment before the maturity as it will deprive Sakaido of using the money for 12 months. Okay? So, when debtor loses the benefit of that period. Okay? So, what are the instances when the debtor loses the benefit of the period? So, These are the instances under Article 1198. The debtor shall lose every right to make use of the period. So, ibig sabihin, pag na-lose ng debtor yung right of the period, ano mangyayari? Uh, ang mangyayari is, um, at that moment, pwede, na, pwede nang singilin sa kanya yung utang. Okay? So, number one, when after the obligation has been contracted, he becomes insolvent. So, pag naging insolvent, okay, magiging demandable at once, ang mga utang niya. Okay? Unless he gives a guarantee or security. Magbibigay siya ng collateral. Okay? Unless magbigay siya ng collateral. Okay? Pero medyo malabo na yon dahil naging insolvent na siya. Okay? Pero possible pa rin naman. Okay? Number two. When he does not furnish to the creditor the guarantees or securities which he has, which he has promised. So, kadalasan nang nagkakamali dito yung mga uh, students is, ano, 
uh, hindi nila nababasa to yung which is he has promised naging mindset nila kaagad every, basta hindi na kapag furnish ng guarantee or security automatic walang benefit of the period which is incorrect kasi um, parang kumbaga uh, hindi ka lang or mawawala lang yung benefit of the period sa iyo kapag in the first place ang kasunduan ng utang or ng or ng loan ay dapat mag-furnish ka ng guarantee or security pinramis mo yun, na ifo-furnish mo yun. Kaso, hindi mo finurnish or hindi mo pinakita or hindi mo binigay. Okay, in, ca- in case of pledge, di ba? Sa, uh, tawag dito, sa creditor. So, yun yung ano, mali. So, mamaya-maya may example tayo sa mga ito. Number three, when by his own acts, he has impaired said guarantees or securities after their establishment and when through a fortuitous event, they disappear unless he immediately gives new ones equally satisfactory. So, Another thing na laging nagkakamali yung mga sudyante dito is akala nila na kapag uh, fortuitous event yung naging reason, hindi niya malulus yung benefit of the period. Pero actually, malulus niya pa rin yung benefit of the period. Malinaw na malinaw po dito sa number 3. Okay? So number 4, when the debtor violates any undertaking in consideration of which the creditor agreed to the period. Okay? So maya maya may example din tayo dyan. And lastly, when the debtor attempts to abscond. Simple lang yung number 5. Kapag gumawa siya ng act na implying na gusto niyang takasan yung utang. Okay? For example, hindi na nagpaparamdam, nag- biglang ng ibang bansa, tapos wala, kinat off niya na lahat ng communication. So, uh, ano yun? Parang kung mga acts of uh, pagtakas sa utang yun. Okay? So, punta na tayo sa mga different examples. So, number one, when after obligation has been contracted, he becomes insolvent unless he gives a guarantee or security. So, leak uh, borrowed 400,000 from Hina to be paid after one year, after five months, Lick became solvent. In this case, Hina did not wait for the lapse of one year to demand the obligation. She can immediately demand payment of 400,000 unless Lick can present a guarantor or he can give securities. Okay. Next, when he does not furnish to the creditor the guarantees or securities which, which he has promised. Lick borrowed 400,000 from Hina to be paid one year. Furthermore, they stipulated that Lick will deliver a specific car after one week to Hina as an object of pledge to secure the obligation. One week has passed but Lick failed to deliver the said car. In this case, Hina need not to wait for the lapse of one year to demand the obligation. She can immediately demand the obligation. Okay? Next, number three. When by his own act, his... He has impaired such guarantees or securities after this establishment and when through a fortuitous event, they disappear unless he immediately gives new ones equally satisfactory. So, Lick borrowed 400000 from Hina, ganun pa rin yung example natin, to be paid after one year. The loan is secured by a mortgage on Lick's car. Um, before the lapse of one year, the car got destroyed to, through Lick's fault. In this case, Hina did not wait for the lapse of one year to demand the obligation. She can demand the 400,000 immediately unless Lick can present another security of equal satisfactory, okay? So, in this case, ang naging reason kung bakit uh, nawala yung security ay through Lick's fault. Pero actually, it doesn't matter. Pag na-destroy yung car, let's say, kahit na hindi through Lick's fault, kahit na for to event pa yan, ganun pa rin yung effect. Hina can... Uh, immediately demand the payment of the 400,000 peso na loan. Okay? And number four, when the debtor violates any undertaking in consideration of which the creditor agreed to the period. Okay? So, Lake borrowed 400,000 from Hina to be paid after one year. They agreed that during the one-year period, Lake must refrain from gambling. Before the lapse of one year, Lake engaged in gambling activities. In this case, okay, hindi na kailangan ulit na mag-wait for the one year but she could demand immediately the 400,000 because there was a violation on Lick's part. Okay? So, last topic tayo. So, when the court may fix the period. Okay? So, Article 1197, nandito siya. Okay? Pero hindi lang Article 1197, actually meron pa. So, if the obligation does not fix a period, but from its nature and the circumstances, it can be inferred that the period was intended. The court may fix the period, okay? Or duration. The court shall also fix the period of the obligation. It depends upon the will of the debtor. In case, in every case, the court shall determine such periods may 
under the circumstances have been contemplated by the parties. Once fixed by the courts, the period cannot be changed by them. Okay, so malinaw po yun. So dito, i-ano natin yung mga iba. Um, if the obligation does not fi fix a period, but from its nature and circumstances, it can be inferred that the period was intended. And if the period is void, such as when it depends upon the will of the debtor. Okay? Um, ito yung, uh, what do you call this? Um, ito yung binabanggit natin kanina. Okay? Pero this time, pag dependent lang siya upon the will of the debtor. Okay? Kasi yung kanina sinasabi natin, ano eh, um, void yung buong obligation. Pero dito, kapag dependent siya upon the will Okay, of the debtor, the period is void. Okay, so in that case, pwedeng mag-intervene si court. Pero hindi pwedeng mag-intervene si court sa isang fully uh, void obligation. So, iba yung ano, iba po yung, um, iba po yung kanina na binabanggit natin, which is, ano, which is, um, obligation, uh, potestative on the part of the debtor, uh, at the same time, it is a suspensive condition. So, condition po yun. That, okay, ang effect po nun, yung buong obligation, void. So, in that case, hindi po pwedeng i-fix yun, kasi void. Okay, pero in this case, void po ang period if it depends upon the will of the debtor only. Pero, it doesn't mean that the whole obligation is void. It is still valid. The, what's only void is the period. In this case, pwedeng mag-intervene si court. Okay ba? So, yun po yung tatandaan nyo dito. Okay? And lastly, last bullet point po natin, if the debtor binds himself when his means permit him to do so. Ito yung nabanggit kanina sa Article 1180. So, sabi natin, ito po ay isang obligation with a period. Okay? So, ano ito? Okay, example. Okay, example nung first ano natin dito, yung if the obligation does not fix a period, but from its nature, meron dapat period. Okay, so ayan. A executed a deed of donation of land in favor of B University. The donation has for its condition that the university must erect a cornerstone in the said land bearing the word A campus. Okay, so walang binanggit with regards to the period. Pero, it can be inferred na may period dapat dito. Dapat asap. Actually, dapat asap. Makapag-erect sila ng cornerstone. Di ba? Okay? Pero, what if, hindi ginawa. Okay? So, so yun. Dahil pinaloso po, wala naman sinabing, ano, wala naman sinabing period. Di ba? So, in this case, okay, pwedeng, uh, pwede tayong pumunta sa korte at, yun nga, okay, ipafix yung period. Okay? Kasi, dapat nga, merong period dito eh. Okay? So, ayan. Um, end of the part 2 of the different kinds of obligations. So, next video po natin ay part 3 naman ng different kinds of obligation which will cover the topics alternative, uh, joint and solidary, yung mga medyo maihirap, di ba? So, divisible and indivisible and the obligations with a penal clause. Okay? So, inuulit ko po, pwede po kayong pumunta sa link below. So, click nyo lang yung link below kung gusto nyo itest yung sarili nyo kung meron nga ba talaga kayong natutunan sa topic natin ngayon. So, mag-sign up kayo. Free lang po yan. Okay? May mga questions po dyan. Okay? Tapos, makikita nyo rin yung sagot after nyo itake yung mga quizzes and syempre, in the future, i-develop pa natin yan para maging isang uh, complete course ng law on obligations and contracts at marami pa siyang matulungan. Okay? So, again, don't forget to subscribe to our channel para ma-alert kayo on the release of the part 3 which is supposed, uh, malamang-lamang bukas i-release na, na rin po natin yung part 3 dahil yun nga, medyo malapit na ata ang pasukan pero mukhang hindi ko lang alam. Sana... Okay, baka may extend yung ating ex uh, ano, yung quarantine, di ba? Or community quarantine, okay? So ayan, don't forget to like the video if uh, nagustuhan nyo. And also coming up next will be the different kinds of obligations part 3. So see you on the next video.